A common objective for multivariate modeling of spectral data is to create calibration models where you use the spectral data as x and concentrations or properties as y. And usually when you do this, the best results of these multivariate calibration models is when you only use one y variable in each model. And to get the best predictive model, one must often try out different pretreatments of the spectral data to remove anomalies and artifacts in the spectra. In SINCA 17, we have therefore created a calibration wizard for the 1y model case, where you can try out different spectral filters and get direct feedback on the model performance and how it compares with the other models. Access to the calibration wizard is given as soon as there is a data set in the project with a spectral ID defined. How to set the spectral ID is described in the feature video on integrated spectroscopy tools. But before we start the wizard, let's have a look at the available data sets in this project. The project contains NIR spectra of commercial beers and some measured properties of those beers. And the goal is to create a prediction model where the NIR spectra is used to predict one of the properties of the beers. There are two NIR data sets, part one and part two, with a spectral ID vector defined at import, and there are two data sets with the measured properties of the same beers. And this is how a spectroscopy project in Simca should look like, spectral data and response data in separate tables. However, in this project, there is a fifth data set that is not created in the correct way for a spectroscopy project. This data set has no spectral ID defined, and it contains both the Y data and the spectral X data together in the same table. This will not happen if you follow the import guiding for spectroscopy projects in Simca 17. However, if you open an old project not created in this version, this may very well be the situation you find yourself in. And had this been the only data set, the calibration wizard would not have been available but it can be made available by first splitting the data set into one with the responses and one with the spectral data. And this is possible using tools found in the data tab. And then you specify the spectral ID for the NIR data using the data set properties. But I will not show this here. This is described elsewhere. Instead, I want to show how the calibration wizard acts when presented with this data set in its current form. You start the calibration wizard by clicking on the button found in the Home tab. On the first page of the wizard, you are to select the X and Y data sets that you want to use. The available data sets are separated into categories, X data sets, Y data sets, and the last category with other available data sets. And this is where the incorrectly formatted data set appears. If we look in the Details column for the mixed data set, it tells us what is wrong. The X and Y variables need to be split. And there is a suggested action link next to it, which reads split data set. So let's click on the action link. We now see one more Y data set in the list. Uh, and in the details for the previously mixed data set, it now reads the spectral ID is not specified. And there's a new action link, set ID. And I select the primary ID to be my spectral ID. And now we have resolved the mixed data set problem. But in this demo, I will select and use the two first parts of the data and leave the newly created data sets behind. So I select both of my NIR data sets and both of my Y data sets. And the message appears in the details column of one of the Y data sets. It says two observations are missing Y data and will be excluded. And at the bottom, we can see a summary of what the selection resulted in. We got 50 observations that have both X and Y data and all other observations will be excluded. Those are the two that missing Y data in the part two of the Y. Note that if the Y datasets contain multiple Ys, 
you can switch into the one that you want to build your calibration models on. The next step is to select observations from the selected datasets. By default, all available observations are set as calibration, as can be seen in the list to the left. In Simca terminology, these are called the workset observations. And this means that they will be part of the model creation. And this defined group of observations is the constant that holds the calibration session together. Changing the calibration observations after the first model is created is not allowed within a session. If you've already decided on a selection of calibration observations in another model, you can use the as model box found above the list to call on that selection. But only models based on the same selection of data sets will be available. But since we don't have any models, we cannot use this here. To the right, there is a plot showing the spectra for the observations, and they are colored by the response variable. Red means high value in Y, and blue means low value. But since we have not created any model yet, we are free to change the observation group assignment as we please. And this can be done by selecting directly in the plot, or as always, in the list. And then you decide how to use the selected observations. You can either exclude them or you can assign them to calibration or validation. You don't need to have a validation set of observations, but they will help in the evaluation of model quality later in the wizard. However, you can always add validation observations later. It is only the calibration group that you cannot change once you have created your first session model. And as you noticed, as soon as the validation observations were assigned, the coloring of the plot changed to display the calibration validation groups instead of the Y variable. But you can toggle between the two coloring modes by clicking on the button in the plot toolbar. In the toolbar, you can also toggle the visibility of excluded observations and now we see the two observations that were excluded because they were missing the Y variables. Below the list, there is also a button to split the data set into calibration and validation groups. You can either split by secondary observation IDs or you can split randomly, which I will select here. And whatever you choose here will override the selection that you have made in the list, except the excluded observations, they will still remain excluded. I'm happy with 80% calibration, 20% validation. Next step is to select the variable range you want to use in the calibration models. You can select in the list or in the plot or import a selection from another model using the as model box as we saw in the observation page. I will select a peak in the plot click and drag. And when you select the variable range, remember that by default all the variables are included, so what you select can only be excluded. But if you, what you want is to build your model on the selected range, here's how you do. After the selection, you go over to the list, you right-click in the selection, and you invert it. Then you're ready to exclude all the others, and you're left with only the selected range. However, I want to keep everything, so I'll re-include them in the model. Uh, the default scaling of the X variables in a spectroscopy project is the center, but if you want to, you can change this here uh, in the variables page. But I'll keep it at center, and now we're ready to start modeling. Now we have reached the main page of the calibration wizard, the filter and compare page. Here is where we try out different pre-processing combinations and compare the predictive abilities of the resulting models. This page has three parts. To the left, we have all the available filters, which looks the same as it does in the pre-processing wizard. And all the filters are described in more detail in the Simca 17 feature video on pre-processing and also in the Simca help file, so this will not be covered here. In the middle of the page, 
there's a section that is empty now, but it will hold a list of the models we create in the session. To the right is the model performance pane, where we can view and compare model statistics later. Below the filter section, the button for creating models can be found. You can create PLS models and OPLS models. And from this button, you can also access the cross-validation settings. Both the model type and changes in cross-validation settings will be active from the model you create after the change and onward until you change it again. I will keep it on PLS. First, let's make the wizard a little bit bigger and better composed. The first model I want to create is a PLS model on the raw data. And this is done by simply not applying any filters. So just clicking on the create PLS model. You can change the name of the model in the list by double clicking on it. And the DS7 part of the name uh, indicates the data set number that is used for this model. And this can be very useful later, so I recommend to keep it in the name. In the model box, you can also add and remove components. Now we shift our focus to the model performance pane on the right and how it looks when only one model is selected in the model list. And now we only have one model. First, we note that there are two views in the pane. There is a calibration view and there is a validation view. The calibration view shows model statistics and the validation view shows the prediction statistics. The content of the pane can be controlled from the menu in the upper right corner. So I can deselect what I don't want to see. I can also rearrange things inside of the pane. Collapse. I can also move things around in the pane. I will not go into this model statistics list. But the most important values here are the cross-validated error, RMSE-CV, and the bias, MBE-CV. The bias vector is new in Simca 17, and it is described more in the feature video on miscellaneous improvements. Now it is time to start trying out different pre-processing options and see what effect they have on the model performance. We start by applying an SNV filter. There are no settings for this filter, so we just say OK. We can see that the SNV uh, filter box appears in the filter chain. And then we can create a PLS model. When two or more models are selected in the model list, like it is now, the model performance pane changes into a compare models pane with three parts. A model statistics list, where the best value in each column is marked in green. A Q-square plot, showing how the Q value changes with model complexity for the selected models. And the last is a bar chart where the RMSE CV values for the models are compared. A small prediction error is desired. So in this case, the first model is slightly better than the second one which can also be seen in the model statistics list. For the validation, we see the same behavior, but the numbers are a bit different. We now see the RMSEP values as bar chart, and the statistics holds the RMSEP and the MBEP values. Let's see if we can improve the performance further. I will, I will add a first derivative to this SNV filtered. OK, and then I fit a model with the first derivative. It did not help in our modeling. I'll try to change this into a second derivative. See what that does. Now we got a little bit better. And we can actually see in the model statistics list that the last model, the fourth model, has a Q, best Q-square 
best RMSE CV value and the best MBE CV value. Let's have a look at the validation. It's the best in the prediction error, but it has a slightly higher bias than the model three. But overall, I would say that this model is the best we have. So let's move on. The last page of the calibration wizard gives a short summary of the pre-processing done for each model so that it can be documented and recreated. So I'll just click finish. In the project window, we can see the models grouped in the session one. And uh, if we haven't changed the model name, we can also find the corresponding data set. So if I want to find the DS7 data set, I can go to data set and open it up. In the properties pane of this data set, you can also find the information on the pre-processing. So you can always recreate uh, from the data set as well. You can also reopen an existing calibration session and continue your work. You do that by clicking on a down arrow and select the calibration session one. You then jump into the select data page and you see that the data set that we have been used in the models cannot be removed, but you can add new validation data sets. If I click next, you can see that all calibration observations are grayed out, but the validation observations can be added or excluded. Next. In contrast to the observations, the spectral range can be modified between session models. So let's only select a part of the spectrum, the last part here. Select, I inverse the selection and then I exclude everything except that part and then I move on. And then I create the PLS model based on the SNV and second derivative, which was the last one we tried out. And now I can select all my models and compare and see what happened. And this one was actually even better. And this concludes the feature video on the calibration wizard. And I hope you find the new functionality useful and make sure to check out our other videos in our YouTube channel, Sartorius Data Analytics. Thanks for watching.